Hey everybody, this is Rob aka Graculin playing Tryon's Rift. I'm on the hey PTS chart. Sorry about that echo. Twitch and Chrome got in a fight again. It's not working very well. Okay, so Tryon just added in three faction PvP onto their public test realm. Right here. There are different reps. There's the Oath Sworn, the Nightfall, the Dominion reps. They don't really give a description of what they stand for. They just ask you to join them. And be careful, once you ally with one, you can't ally yourself with another. So, hey, if you come to play, uh, do me a favor and join Dominion because we're kind of outnumbered, and I'll show you that here in a second. So if you want to get in, oh, hit K to open your PvP tab. Go to Conquest, click Join, you're going to get in, hit Enter, and you're ready to rock and roll. So, right, as you can see, if you're familiar with... Rift it all, I am in a zone, still more. It is in a new, one of the, it's like a sliver type dimension. So as you know, Rift introduces slivers a few patches ago that allows them to essentially create whatever reality they want within a sliver. You can go through the sliver and, hey you're in a whole new world. These are, this is the starting point for the Dominion base. I imagine that you're going to find the other three around here. As you can see here, Nightfall is winning 14, Dominion is 4, Oathsworn are 2. Uh, Nightfall has been way overran. It's because they're the cool kids. They want to take over the world and express their opinion on everybody, on how they should live, and they think that Ascended should rule the Earth. So... Of course, everybody's playing Nightfall. I was a dumbass. I picked Dominion. If I had to do it over again, I'd be Nightfall. So I could show you a winning team. Unfortunately, I don't think that's going to happen. So, this is me. This is a Dominion Extractor. This is a Nightfall Extractor. So we can run over here and see if there's a hotspot, see if there's any PvP going on over here. There is, in fact someone from my faction attacking this. So we can go ahead and start to attack it. If you guys got any questions, let me know. I'll do my best to answer them. I don't know everything. I've picked up a little bit from the patch notes I've been able to read. If you hear fussy baby noises in the background, that's my kid. She's supposed to be asleep, but she decided she wants to stay up and watch Dad. Yeah, wave hi, everybody. I want to show you here real quick. You do get conquest points for being in conquest. And with conquest, you gain certain buffs. Some of the buffs they talked about carrying with you outside of the conquest zone would be, you know, increases attack power, max health, and vengeance by 3% for however long you own the conquest zone. Now that will actually carry over into your real realm. Um, just so you know, oh, there goes another faction right there. Worth a try. Hey Jordan, how you doing? 
So you can watch PvP and not be beat on an extractor. There are also a couple other things that are going on in this Warfront. Okay, Nightfall is up to 17, by the way. They are stomping our faces in. It's not even funny at this point. You get to 21, you win. Uh, Oathsworn's getting really decimated there at 1. We're at 4. Uh, not too bad. I'd be doing better if I was on the Nightfall because then I could show you guys some windy mechanics. Um, there's another way to win. Attrition. Uh, when 5,000 people die in the zone, that can declare a winner. Uh, you can declare a winner by capturing these different points. These conquest extractors. And as you can see, another person just left my right. So this isn't going so well. For, it is a PTS, but people are just bailing. I can actually... Uh, I've got other characters... that I could log into the PTS with and join Nightfall and show you what it's like to be on a winner. So let's do that. After I stop attacking this planar animal, that is. Yes, sad news about 38 studios. Thirty-eight studios. I guess in case you didn't hear it, Dana, they went bankrupt. They're the people that made Kingdoms of Amalar Reckoning. The, they were the team working on Copernicus. They couldn't pay the bills. And now they're done. Yeah. They're thinking that maybe they could the state of Rhode Island could sell the IP and everything associated with it for $20 million. I'm hoping somebody for that price tag will pick it up. <laughs> okay. Now, while I think that's really great, here's a question for you. If a company went out of business, and they go out of business because of the quality of the product they made, would you want to hire all those people that just... Uh, see where I'm going with this? Okay, I can't join that faction. It says too many reps on it. We'll go back to this one. Just something to think about. But yeah, they couldn't make their bond payment, and that's the worst thing that can happen. If you are a company and you're going to go bankrupt and you want to restructure, you at least have to be able to make your bond payments because that's like the lifeblood of borrowing as a corporation. Yeah. You got to realize that's going to be a competitive, business, or a competitive market right now too with all the layoffs that EA just did with um, Spotor. You know, even Rockjaw lost his job. Like the face of your company to the social media, when you, you know, when you chop his head, it don't look good. So okay, did anybody just see that night sky? Look at that. See all that stuff right there? You know what I see? What I think of when I see that? I think of Terra. I'm just throwing that out there. But I think of Terra. So. You know, I don't know. It's a shame. I was really looking forward to it. My new, my new game that I'm most looking forward to probably is the Elder Scrolls Online then. If Copernicus is dead, I'm most looking forward to the Elder Scrolls Online. And really the only reason I was looking forward to Copernicus is because I'm a huge R.A. Salvatore fan. So 
So this looks like a conquest extractor that nobody's at. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to try and capture that. Oh, and in case nobody saw, I got a new video out on my YouTube channel. I did a run through of the first instance of hell. There's three hell instances in the secret world. Uh, I did a walkthrough last night with some of the other guys from MMORPG.com and Tor. This is his first name, Earl. I don't want to butcher his last name. He is Norwegian. He is from Funcom. And he was one of the developers on the Secret World. He was there with us last night. Okay, so what I just picked up was some of the Empowered Source Stones, which is a crafting mechanic in this game. Um, this thing has about 341,000 hit points. Might take me a little while to kill it, so let me get out of this. I'm still stuck in combat. Oh, come on. Get out of combat. I used to play the heck out of this game. I even got an orange. They changed the look of the greater companion. And it's so nice now that I'm almost considering playing it again just because... Actually, I take the back. I did uh, purchase a three-month subscription today to Rift because of this. I'm going to go ahead and give another shot on some of my off time. Actually, you had to... Okay, that lockdown message went across. Nightfall has 23 points. That means that we have to take some of those points away from them within the next 10 minutes or they win. My tanking gear is all from, like, Hammernell. Of course, Hammernell is not even the top stuff now. With the new raid zone. Oh, and guess what? There are kits getting mailed out to media outlets that make me believe that Rift is getting ready to do an expansion. And that's actually stolen from an IGN post. But I agree with what the guy's saying. My cat, my cat is sitting on top of here. Really, Fluffy? Come on, dude. Are you going to help me? What are you doing? Are you even attacking? He's like, eh, whatever, man. I'm chilling. So they changed the health bars. I noticed that since last time I played. Telling people in chat, please join the Dominion. We could really use your help in our faction because right now we are getting our butts stomped in the face. My pet is trolling me. You know what? This is not the first time I've been trolled by a pet either. I had a... Or that wasn't a pet. That was a mount. I had a mount troll me in Ion. If you stand on top of your surf rider for too long in Ion, it'll blow a, a water spout up and knock you off. It's like, S.O.B. Really? God damn. You get the idea. So, I've only got five people on my team. It's not voting well. I've got seven and a half minutes left. 
to take out this extractor and claim it. And I do a couple thousand deeps, and I'm getting killed. So, yeah. God bless it, right? Oh, you think that's funny, do you? Ascended Courage. It looks like there's some kind of bolstering mechanic in play. Your effective power has been increased. So I was killed by a Nightfall. Dominion, have no, which is who I'm part of, have no points anymore. Apparently my group is fighting. Oh, Ryo, I don't know, man. This is the first time I've really logged on and played in six months. Since, like, November. I logged on, actually, and made a video a while back, and I haven't played since. So it's actually been three months since I played. I didn't mean to lie to you, but I didn't really play a lot. It was a free weekend. This I'm actually paying. I'm pay I paid to get on the PTR. I know that sounds a little ridiculous, but it's true. Oh well. I'll get it back somehow for one. Alright, so all my peeps got killed. <laughs> because they're all back down here running some spots again. I know, it's so terrible, isn't it? It upset my daughter. I was like, all my people got killed. And she's like, ah. Alright, she's done being fussy right now. And now she's asleep. That was like her final throws before she passed out. <laughs> yeah, Jordan, I saw. I responded back. Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, and she's back to it. She's like, ah, I tricked you. He said I was dead. But, uh, yeah, like uh, Jordan said, y yes, I was on a podcast. I was on Game On, which is MMORPG.com's podcast. And if you hold on a second, I'll, I'll post a link to you.
You can also subscribe to Game On on iTunes. <laughs> First comment, Mars at play. Really enjoy these. Listen to them while walking my dog or when I want to tune out my wife. Keep them coming. That's exactly why we make them, people, so you can tune out your wives. Unless you're a woman and you're watching, and then we make them so you can tune out your husband. Well, and now you got a podcast that you can hear me on. I'm not always on it. This was actually uh, the first episode that I guessed it on. And I don't know how well sound did the sound editing, but you could hear in the background, like very softly, you could hear whoosh, 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 whoosh. back and forth. Sounds like a, a really light metronome. It was my <laughs> daughter's swing. I'm like, what's that? Oh. I was like, I didn't know you could hear that. It was pretty funny. It's not letting me... Oh, wow, that's weird. So the hitbox on this is teeny tiny. I was, like, standing right on top of it. We got one. Oh, yeah. Something happened there. Thank you, Jordan. Okay, let me see if it'll let me swap and go Nightfall this time. Scrub it. Let's see if we can get some winning. Okay, so I sold my soul to rock and roll and join with the Nightfall group because apparently they've got a lot of people. <laughs> and I want to show you what the hell is going on, not just get dead. All right, so here, here's a better one anyways because my UI is a little bit larger so you can see kind of what's going on. I don't have... PvP gear, but oh well. People are already in here saying that this is addicting. Well, you were kicking the crap out of everybody because you had so many more people, so I can see how it'd be a little addicting for you. Okay, so here is the first one, and there's a bunch of party on it. Let's go there and beat the poop out of it. Notice again that the hitbox for this thing is teeny tiny. By the way, if you've never ever played Rift before, I just want to let you guys know that it's a free download for the client. And you can play the game for free up to level 20. 
And then if you like it, you can choose to buy it. So, you can't go wrong. So the game technically is not free to play, but it is free to trial. It ends and starts up again like a battleground, only it's a lot longer. There's apparently two conditions to win it right now. The first one is to collect 21 of these extraction points and hold them for 10 minutes, which if you have 40 versus 40 people in here is a lot harder. You know, it's going to take a while to do. Um, or you can kill 5,000 people. And when 5,000 people are dead, whoever holds the most points can win. So, It, but it does reset, and actually the games right now, oh, that's real cool. That's one of the uh, special mounts they had, one of the last events. It's a sparkle pony. Literally, it's a sparkle pony. It's a pony that's sparkling. I don't know why my mount is so much slower than theirs. Seriously, folks. My fifth gear got broken. And I doth apologize for it. Oh, wow. Okay, again, hitbox on these. Teeny tiny. Teeny tiny. Yes, I do have a turtle. It's a Thordican. And he is slow. I got a spider in the mailbox if I go pick it up. A spindrel. By the way, I uh, cheat, and I've got all the all the fat loots. Uh, actually, I didn't take the fat loots on the armor, but I got all the fat loots on the weapons. My college mascot was a turtle. She was a diamondback terrapin. So for those of you that are just now joining the stream, this is Tryon's Rift, and I'm on the public test shard, and we are trying out Conquest. It's Tryon's attempt at three faction PvP. It has no bearing, or uh, let me rephrase that, your initial PvE faction, whether you're Defiant or Guardian, has no bearing on what faction you get to play as in Conquest. In Conquest, you get to pick three different factions. You can be Nightfall, Dominion, or Oathsworn. They have... Amazing. I'm not Dominion this time, and Dominion's ruffle something. Nightfall, it looks like. Should I go back and hold true to my Dominion bloodlines? Nope. Won't do it. Okay. So you can choose between Dominion, Nightfall, and Oathsworn. And this is actually what's kind of considered a sliver in Rift. A couple patches back, Rift added in a mechanic that allowed you to have quantum sight. And with this quantum sight, you could see slivers. They were a new type of tear in the dimensional fabric of Talara. And you could walk through these portals and basically enter in to enter any reality. Now... What this means is realistically trying could make a sorry I was reading some some of somebody's in the chat. Realistically trying could make a sliver that would allow somebody to walk through Talara and into your bedroom and kill you. But they probably wouldn't do that. But what they can do is come up with all these different weird twists and have you go through those and bam, here we are. Personally, I want rifts that allow you to finally go through them and into the elemental planes. And I've been saying that since last November uh, when I was smashing my face against Achilleos 
and Hammernell. Like, oh, oh, I want to go into their elemental planes and kill them. I'm tired of them coming to Solara and shitting on our realm. And I'm thinking they might finally be getting around to doing that. Someone at IGN today reported that they received a box. And in this box, they had a couple pictures. They had some soles from a shoe. They had a level with the number 10 on it. And they had a bunch of stuff. What it leads me to believe is that there's going to be, and him too, I mean, I'm basically just stealing this from this guy. Uh, I probably could have deduced it for myself if I saw it, but he had it first, so credit where credit's due. They're going to come out with a full-fledged expansion that has two raids, which is represented by the pictures. It's going to gain, we're going to go from level 50 to 60, which is represented by the level that has number 10 on it. And that there was also... A big key with six little keys, and the big key had a name of what appears to be a capital city on it with six smaller cities or continents, or not continents, but zones on a continent, which I think is going to be that stuff we saw data mined on the PTS a year ago, that city in the zones. So I think we're going to probably see maybe like another island. I don't think it'll be the Plain Touched Wilds. I think those are going to be separate. And if everybody's like, oh, it's a Plain Touched Wilds, oh, I can't. Oh, I can't look at it from here because it's considered a separate sliver. Uh, the Plain Touch Wilds is down by the Droughtlands. It's totally... It's still gray on your map. Um, so I think there's going to be two major raids at launch. A new capital city. Six sub-zones. And a new soul for each uh, archetype. One of the reasons I stopped playing Rift right here is because you get Carpal Tunnel. Okay. Let's see something real quick. Rift does have good uh, customer support. I'll give them that. I had one problem one time, and they gave me, like, a bunch of stuff for it. They gave me a free month's game time, all kinds of crap. Oh, that's cool. I actually have a collector's edition box that I haven't even done anything with. It's still got an active account with a month of time on it. Only one person has died in this so far. We're at five to three with only, with four thousand nine hundred and ninety nine deaths left.
Okay, so this right here, this is a Empower Source Stone. We want to collect these and turn them in back at our camp. What the hell is This right here is a planar anomaly. If you attack that, it'll start pulsing and it'll fill your planar charges. I might as well collect these. Uh, my problem with Rift was I was finishing up my bachelor's at the time in night school, and I needed to focus on my studies. So I stopped playing and then graduated and didn't come back to Rift. Just started playing different games. And then started streaming and writing for MMORPG, and then I just don't have time to raid in one game hardcore, basically like a casual Sally on a bunch of different games. So, okay, you saw me pick up those little corrupted source stone thingamabobs, or empowered source stones, I'm sorry, and I'll come over here to the resource depot, and I'll turn them in. I deposited 14, and you see we have 52, and this is a corrupted workstation. You're supposed to be able to craft So let's open the crafting panel and see if anything. You're supposed to be able to. I don't know if they haven't added it yet or not. But crafting is supposed to take. It's supposed to have a really big influence on this game. Uh, and by the game, I don't mean Rift. I just mean Conquest. Let's see what this doofus has to say. <clears throat> Excuse me. Greetings. No, I don't want it. <coughs> Death to the dragons. I'll let Jordan answer that question, and then I'm going to give you my take on that question, because I was actually thinking about this earlier today when I found out about the possible expansion news. Crumb left, didn't even say goodbye. Okay, while well, uh, he's typing out, let me give you my take on what I think about the whole expansion thing. Rift has released enough content since this game has been live that it could actually qualify as an expansion on its own. But Rift hasn't really seen an increase in its player base that should correspond with all this new content. Personally, I think that they should not release any other content patches after this Conquest comes out. And they should focus all of their attention on making an expansion. And I don't care if it's stuff that you would have released for free. Put it in a box. Sell it for 20 bucks if you want. Do something, but call it an expansion become 2.0 because of all the buzz you'll generate around an expansion, even if it was something you didn't just put in a content update or a couple of them, it's a great marketing tool. And I don't think you have to increase the level cap, which 
with all these planar attunements they have, I'm kind of surprised that they would increase the level cap. Because, um, you know, Hartsman uh, was EQ and alternate advancements, and I guess they expanded their level cap there. I guess it's really the only Dark Edge Camelot that didn't ever up their level cap. But I personally think that they should just do an expansion because of the hype level alone. And anybody who listened to my last podcast, I think overhyping stuff can be bad. But creating a minimal amount of hype, you know, is, is necessary. But maybe that's just me. Well, I, I agree that the expansion will be 2.0. What I'm saying is they should stop. After they release this content patch that puts Conquest in the game, they should not release any other content patches and just and whatever the next one is it should be the expansion. Hey, I totally get you about the whole subscription fee thing. You know, microtransactions are probably going to be the way of the future on almost everything. Cosmetic and convenience. The only problem is, is these games are going to become pay to win. It's just a fact of life if that happens. Okay, apparently there's another mechanic that allows you to collect source stones. T3, I think we're disconnecting on what we're saying. I I understand an expansion of this content. What I'm saying is they shouldn't release any other content until they release an expansion. You know, the next content update should be in an expansion. No more patching in raids. I mean, they've patched in two 20-man raids. That's a lot. And like three 10-man raids. People are pugging Achilles. I just resubscribed today. You have to be subscribed to play on the PTR. So I subscribed for three months. So I'll probably play like once or twice a month. Oh, it did. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. I'll still walk this time. Really? Cool. I was there like in November when it was tough. <laughs> uh, 
uh, November. I did like a couple hours of play on a free weekend just to do like a promotional thing for 1.7 Carnival of the Ascended, but I haven't played played since November. But I still got like 5,000 achievement points. Yes, you can copy a pre-made character to PTR. Where are my guys at? Oh, I see what he's doing there. No, I've not done Infernal Dawn yet. I would like to, but I haven't. I've done Caduceus Rise. That was it. I did that on a free weekend. I don't know if I'm doing that right. No, not really. Well, it looks like there's got people. Let's see. This one's under attack. I'll head over there. Get my PvP gear on first. Like, I'm sure my specs aren't even right anymore, you know. And my tank, I thought my tank had a lot of hit points with, like, 20,000 hit points, but I'm sure that's not even that good anymore either. Now, oh, if you can see that, 54.35... You know, back then it was only like 8,000 possible. So yeah. Oh, look at this. I need to close three more PvP rifts to get this achievement. I know what I'll be doing tomorrow. Closing some PvP rifts. There we go, got some PvP on the PvP game. Got a war trophy. That's a quest item. Alright, starts a quest. Ooh, someone in your capital will reward you for this. Someone needs to tell Tryon that taking war trophies is against the Geneva Convention. at you, Eric Adams. James Nichols.
Yeah, I would imagine that this is probably going to go get packed. Hey, just so you know, if you have a Rift character, I would log on to this and try it for a few minutes because they're giving out special titles to people who participate in the Conquest P2R trials. So if you're kind of into that kind of thing, just as an FYI. I actually have the Stalker title from one of those contests they did. I don't want to like tell you to resub because I just resubbed or anything, but you know, I just resubbed. I figured if nothing else, I love Tryon, and I consider it a donation to their cause. <laughs> it's like here, I'll give David some cash, so Goliath will stop stomping on him. You know what I really like too. Since uh, I kind of have to be into the whole social media deal, I really like the fact that it has Twitter <laughs> built into it because I sit there and can follow my Twitter feeds. Like right now, I'm reading from uh, Eric Boyer, the producer on DDO, talking about arranging a Dungeons and Dragons dev chat for open beta in a couple weeks. That's one of the reasons I like their interface. Yeah, I think I've been wasting every one of those crystals I've been picking up. These gems, I think, they buffed. Buffed. They buffed. These gems buff the extractors. Now... Crafting, man, they still have not fixed this dye bug in this game. A year after the game's been out, I haven't had green armor in forever, yet I still zoom in and zoom out of my character and my armor goes to green. It's crazy. So these gems are supposed to buff the extractors, and this is the extractor I'm heading towards. Crafting is supposed to allow you to make items that will buff the raid, essentially. Now this is supposed to stop in a few minutes. So just so you know the stream might you know the, the match may end here in about three minutes or so. Just as an FYI. I uh, remember if you like what you see here on MMORPG's Twitch channel. Make sure you follow the channel. Uh, follow myself on Twitter. It's at Graculin or Facebook. It's Graculin. Okay, here we go. There's a Fortify Extractor button there that I just now noticed. Hi, welcome to the game, Graculin.
I just realized there's a button right here. You know, I didn't see that the other ten times I was holding the gym. Good golly. We're trying to go into their house and take their extractor from them. Probably not what you're supposed to be doing. But, you know, hey, it's fun. It's all fun. Yeah. Pretty much exactly what I thought was going to happen happen. I appreciate it, Jordan. You tried. Trying to. Here we go. Yeah, there you go. That's me. And he posted my YouTube. So if you're interested in the Secret World, actually, I just posted a video on Secret World last night. Can't see him anywhere else. Right at the moment. That was a press event. Hey, Velmax, thanks for all the follows. I appreciate it. You might actually be number, I think you're number 99 on the old YouTube channel. Oh yeah, hey, by the way, everybody else that streams on this channel, including uh, the MMORPG com admin, if you go down underneath the picture where it says watch our past videos, there's a uh, little buttons there and you can click and follow everybody that streams here on Twitter or you can just stream or just follow the MMORPG one. Regardless, Ripper X is pretty entertaining and then Hillary Pocket Nicole, she normally streams on Monday, I've got a show that I usually do on Wednesday called Way Back Wednesday where I play an older game. Next week is a surprise, but I've cryptically hinted that it has a sequel that's currently out and very successful. So it really isn't that big of a stretch to figure out what game I'm talking about. Uh, the last one I did was Ultima Online. We had roughly about 100 to 120 people in the chat room the entire time. Pretty successful. Uh, Hillary co-hosted that one with me. We had Bonnie Armstrong from EA Mythic. I have a lot of developers that get involved with those two that are actually on with me. Uh, I've talked to Tom Tarasis on EverQuest. I talked to Dave Georgeson, a.k.a. Smoke Jumper, with EverQuest 2. I've talked to Craig Morrison with Funcom for Age uh, of Conan. I've talked to Kai Schober who's a community manager for Bioware Mythic on Dark Age Camelot, as well as John Thornhill and Talal. Oh, what? What am I going to mess his name up? 
So a lot of guys. It's good times. We do some fun stuff. We actually just got into really streaming uh, probably about in January. We've got a pretty successful channel going so far. We're not like day nine or total biscuit yet, but you know, give it time. We'll build, we'll grow. Yeah, I'd actually get them for a D2 playthrough. And to be honest with you, though, World of Warcraft would qualify for a Wayback Wednesday. It's old enough. Yes, I've done a Dark Age of Camelot way back Wednesday. I actually do a monthly play session with Kai Schober and one of the developers on Dark Age of Camelot. And speaking of which, we will probably be playing on June 6th. We've been leveling characters. We are going to be in the, four, the 45 to 49 area next time we do it. Uh, if you go on my YouTube channel... I have links to the episodes. So if you go to my YouTube channel and you look on the Wayback Wednesday playlist, you can see the Wayback Wednesday episodes where I did Dark Age Camelot. And that one usually has a very good crowd. We usually have about 120 to 150 people watching that. And we get there and play, and that's... That is a game I pay a sub fee to play. Again, I don't play it all the time. Why won't you... I want to let me fortify the extractor. I guess that's fully buffed. Look at that, there's Jordan. And Braden, if you actually subscribed to my YouTube channel while you were there, I think you might be like number 100. Just saying. Yep, you'd be you'd be number 100. Be the guy that put me into the triple digits. So what I'm saying is, it's up to you. You have the power. Okay, so I can't mount, by the way, in case you're curious why I'm not mounting when I have the stone. I can mount, but I'll drop the stone. And I'm going to head towards this extractor right here and see if I can buff that one. Because it doesn't look like it's buffed. You will be forever known. Yay! Circa 83 will be forever known as subscriber number 100. Hey, Jimbo. Okay, I can't buff this one either. What is going on?
This is brand new, Jimbo. Uh, they, this is on the public test shard of Rift, Try on World's debut MMO, and a case study for business on how to launch a successful AAA MMO, in my opinion, other than the security issue they had. So we are tied 9 to 9 with Nightfall. Oh, the Nightfall just took one on us. They're 10. So we got to go and get this back. Oh, so we're at 3. There's only been 51 deaths, so this fight is not going to be one through attrition. It's going to be one based on who captured this the most points. As you can see, there's a lot of neutral points. I don't see why we're really fighting over points when there's neutral points, but hey... Nah, I don't know. They said that as many people until the server breaks. So, I don't know. They didn't give that answer yet. I don't know why they want to sit here and fight in here. I mean, maybe it's fun to kill and stuff, but it's not a winning strategy. Guess who's back for Iron Man 3? I don't know who's back for Iron Man 3. Let's go see IGN. Who's back? It looks like John Favreau will be returning to the Iron Man franchise after all. After stepping down from the director chair, many people are worried that the former Iron Man 1 and 2 Helmer wouldn't be reprising his role as Happy Hogan. Tony Stark's driver, bodyguard, right hand man in Marvel's Iron Man 3, but according to Favreau's Twitter, we need not worry any longer. So, John Favreau is not going to direct Iron Man 3, but he is going to be Happy Hogan in the movie. I think it really is going to depend on how many the server load can handle because if any of you guys remember the game when it first came out and they had, they were like, oh, our architecture is scalable and we can support thousands of players in the zone for these massive events. And then we had the first world event, and everybody was so excited. It was on Saturday morning. I remember telling my wife, Honey, I can't go do that with you today because I must stay home and do a world event for Rift. It's once in a lifetime. I know you don't understand what I'm talking about, but let me just say I cannot go with you today. And she's like, You're fucking weird, and let me stay home. And I was like, Okay. So... 
it was a fucking lag fest from hell. And those of you who watch me stream know that I do not cuss very much on streams at all. But that's the only way to describe it. That was just ridiculous. It was stop motion animation videos watching these and trying to actually see the final stage three. There was weeks and weeks and weeks of this buildup for this event. And the event lasted like an hour. And people were just crushing everything. And you'd get up to these big, huge monsters and hit them one time. And then they'd fall over dead because half the zone was there hitting them. Um... So, yeah, it was a big CF, and the servers couldn't handle it. Okay, so, yeah, Infamous, that's what I'm getting at. They're going to probably have to put something into play that caps, like, 40 each side, so there's, like, maybe 120 people in the zone playing. Maybe a little bit more. I'm not sure exactly, you know, a hard number. I don't know that there's a hard number to be given. I know people that didn't like this game because there's too many spell effects going off in it. They said, they're like, oh, too many spell effects. I don't like it. And by I know people, uh, my brother. Yeah. He was like, there's too many spell effects. So what made me think about that is because look at all this. Look at all these particle effects going off at once right now. That's a lot. I was like, dude, you can turn them off. He's like, ah, I don't know. Yeah, and that's because Eve's aren't like a button mashing fest like Rift is, you know. So, you know, Eve, you're picking your orbit, you're zooming in and out, you're doing all this stuff. Hello, LC2. How are you tonight? <laughs> One LC2. Two LC2s. <laughs> That was my count joke. So, yeah. And let's not get started on the P on the cap issue, though, because seriously, then you're going to want to go to Guild War 2. And I'll tell you what, those overflow servers really, really make it hard to PvE with your buddies. Great idea. Not working out so well in implementation. Conceptually, great idea. Implementation, not quite there yet. No, not a lot of players in Conquest. There's maybe seven or eight of us aside right now. Oh, I killed the turret! Uh, Guild Wars 2 does not have a release date, to my knowledge. The Secret World does. And if you're interested in The Secret World, make sure to check my YouTube channel or check MMORPG.com. You can see a video that we made last night, and by we I mean me, of the new instance. It's called Hell. It's basically just some quick video footage of the bosses. I didn't go over any strategies because I didn't want to give them away yet seeing as the game's not out. I thought it would be a little premature to uh, tell you how to beat all the bosses in the instance when the instance isn't even out yet. <laughs> how you don't own the game? Hey, just so you know though, if you don't own the game, you can't get on the PTS, you are correct. But you can actually download the game client and play the game in like a perpetual free trial up to level 20. Now, Warhammer Age of Reckoning kind of does that too. It's called, I think, a perpetual free trial. Uh, yeah, so I don't know what Rift calls theirs, but I do know that you can perpetually free trial it until level 20 until your little heart's content. So... I don't know, maybe that does you some good. So you can play it until you either decide that you like it or you get sick of it. 
and then quit. Wow does too. You are correct. So if anybody, are you familiar with um, Rift, you know that Xeros Return is a city in Stillmore that's populated. And as you can see here in this little alternate dimension, it is not populated. It's here. It looks pretty much the same. There is a particulum. That's about it. I will say that the secret world is not for everybody. The combat animations are still a little stiff. Everybody's bemoaning that. I will agree to it. I will consent to that. However, I ooh hey how are you, how are you doing? Time to die. And you're not gonna die because there's another rogue there. So you're probably killing on me. Yes, I'm tenacious. You know what that's called right there? That's called tenacity. That and there's a, an invisible guy right there on my team helping me out. Uh, my name is Rob or Graculin. And it's cool that you know my name. I'm not that popular yet. Uh, my opinion on the fact that you can change your faction, I will say that it's good to give people choice. Okay, and that's not canned. It's good to allow people to choose to do these kind of things. Like they allow people to change servers once a week for free as well. So it would be kind of interesting if they didn't let you change which faction you were on as far as that goes. Could this create an imbalance? Yes, absolutely it could create an imbalance. But it could also be used to rectify balances because if you really are interested in playing the game and having fun, you're not going to want to be on the side that's just steamrolling everybody because that's going to be fun for a week or two. And then you're going to want a challenge. So people really will start to balance the game up, especially those that are serious about PvP. I actually am more concerned about the fact that the rewards for the PvP and, this, and Conquest right now I don't think are substantial enough that people are really going to be that concerned about it. Like you can get a 3% buff to damage or health that's going to carry with you out into the real world. So what? You know, 3%? Who cares? about three percent. Give me something that's going to boost my money. Give me something that's going to boost my planar attunement collection skills. Give me something that's going to have a, like a, a real effect on me. Uh, you know, that's going to make me want to come back in here and do it because this is going to be fun for a lot of people for a little while without it having any appropriate rewards. It's going to be fun for a lot of people for a long time, if you come in here, you get it done, and it has an effect on your gameplay the rest of the time. Conquest rewards, not so hot. Then there's another thing you can do in Conquest rewards, and that is you can get uh, recipes to enchant your weapons for like PvP. I don't know that that is a concern. I personally don't know that it's something that they thought through too well yet. I think that they're probably at a point where they're concerned that they'll overdo it and uh, imbalance something. 
as opposed to a lot of times they've overtuned things to start off with and they've gone too far in one direction and had to come back and correct. I think this time they're trying to do a small reward and maybe tweak it upwards as it goes. And you're right, people will complain about everything. I'm just trying to bring up what I consider to be valid points for the health of the game, not for the me, 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 me's that are only concerned about themselves. Because I was a DPS warrior that was told that was agility stacked when this game was working on agility, and I was completely for them adjusting and going to strength because I thought in the long run it was better for the overall health of the game for Warriors DPS to be dependent upon strength and not agility. Um, I also really hated the fact that it made Warriors, and keep in mind, I was a Warrior, I hated the fact that I wanted daggers because daggers were rogue weapons. Rogues deserve to have daggers. Warriors got axes and swords. And I was in a raid, and, you know, I would see the people in my guild that were warriors it reluctantly want to take daggers, and not because they wanted to take daggers from rogues, it was because that was the best weapon for them. And that's not right, because now all of a sudden all this plate strength gear that would have been great if strength would have been the primary attribute for warriors was being wasted. So, yeah, we were all built based on agility, and it would have been inconvenient because we had spent marks, but tough shit for the overall long-term health of this game, the best way to go was to make strength the number one attribute. And that's what eventually they did. I think it took them too long to do it, but they finally did go that route. Thanks, Kickaxe. I try as much as possible. Uh, trolls are easy to ignore. You just ignore them, because they're just mad. They're the ones sitting there. I got a theory on trolls. All right, There's two types of trolls. There's trolls that are trying to be funny, and then there's trolls that are miserable in their own life, so they try to make you miserable. So I'm just happy about the fact that I'm not miserable, and they are, so they can go troll all they want. What cla right now I'm playing a warrior, and I am a hybrid build that is probably out of date and not something you'd want to be, and I'm trying to bring up with my... There we go, there's my soul. Okay, so this was called a Rage Storm build. This was dependent. It was a Void Knight Champion Rift Blade build, and the key ability was Rage Storm. Uh, where is it at? Good lord. If I could even find it. It's pretty sad I can't even find it anymore, huh? Yeah, no, you're right. I've had up to 2,000 people at one time uh, when I was doing Guild Wars 2. And before that, I'm trying to think of what that. So, but normally I'm down here. I got gotcha. you. So we lost another point to Nightfall. What kind of ki Am I the fat, happy type? I'm not gay. Not that there's anything wrong with gay people. That's just not for me. Uh, so I guess I'd be the fat, happy type. And as far as the game being dead, I don't think it's dead. I mean... They put so much time into this game and so much content that there has to be a player base to warrant them to make the amount of content they do because if there wasn't, they would just shudder. You know, you don't hear about mass layoffs at Tryon like we just saw at 38 Studios. I mean, if the game was doing poorly, they would lay people off. Um... But they're not, and they're continuing, I mean, they're not hiring at a massive rate, but they continue to pump out content. So I don't think they would do that if they didn't have people that were consuming the content. You know, I'm not going to make you dinner if you're not going to eat it. It's just that simple. Um,
Now, it doesn't have a million players. It's maybe got 100,000. But you can server transfer. And they just put in a guild finder function as well, which is shift G. Okay, here's a guild, a guild finder, not a group finder, a guild finder. I couldn't begin to speculate. I haven't played in a long time. I know some people out there have tried to speculate based on the amount of people that have X-Fire, but I think X-Fire is kind of like the dodo. Uh, I would say, I would say 600,000 subs is probably a reach. I'd be very pleasantly surprised if we were to find out that would. Tryon is not a public... Here's something you guys should know. No, I agree with you. It's better than Swotor. I'm not disagreeing with that. There are more people that play Swotor at the moment, unfortunately. Here's the deal. Tryon, okay, is a privately owned company. It's For those of you guys that know all this stuff, I apologize. For those of you who don't, here's a little business one-on-one for you. EA, Blizzard, you know, Blizzard's Activision... Those are those companies. They're publicly traded companies. They're required to release their financial data for investors. They have to do it. So they have to go over subscription numbers. They have to publicly release this stuff because you know you and I want to buy their stock or not buy their stock based on these numbers. Tryon is a privately owned company. They don't have to release their numbers for their financial data in the same way because these are all like SEC filings, which is Securities and Exchange Commission filings that these companies are doing with their investor calls and stuff like that when they're releasing these types of numbers, Tryon doesn't have to do that. So that's why they don't give out their numbers. Uh, that being said, I think if they had a staggeringly good number to come out with, they would come out with it and tell you because they'd be proud of it. So I'm, I don't think it's that bad. I think it's probably still in six figures, but I know it's not in seven, and I want to say it's pro probably in the low... 200s. That's my best guess. And that's really just kind of winging it. Feel free to disagree with me. I don't know why we're up here doing this. I'm not going to do this again. I I totally agree that Triana is a quality company. Yes, I agree with you. They don't have to have a million people. So, I don't... I don't want to be confused to make you think that I believe they have to have a bajillion people playing their game to be successful. It's like I said, CCP with 50,000 people, if that's all it takes to fund E, that's all it has to take. Again, for these privately held companies, it's all about making a profit. You know, they just got to make, got to make money. They got to keep their people employed, you know, pay their wages, provide the benefits, turn a profit for the investors, and that's it, you know. When you start becoming a publicly traded company, you know it's all about they want return on investment. That's all they care about, and that means totally slashing. You know, if, if something's making a profit, but it's not even within the profit range they want, they'd be like, you know what, you're done. We're going to cut you and turn around and put these uh, put this capital somewhere else where we think we're going to even higher percentage of return on our investment. So. Yeah, Tryon, it's a great game. Like I told somebody earlier, I just resubbed for three months based on this Conquest coming out. I'll probably play the game maybe ten times. And I consider the other 30 bucks or whatever a donation back in from the community from, you know, some money I pick up off of, like, articles and different stuff like that I write. Whatever. I'll spread the wealth back out. Um, I'm really excited for... End of Nations, Tryon's MMORTS, 
that they've got coming out. Some 24 on 24, or 26 on 26, persistent battle world RTS conflicts. And you'll see us fighting our sister stream MMORTS when those... Yeah. Other people's money. You're playing with house money, is what they call it. But yeah, they try and start it off, and this is kind of depressing too, because 38 Studios spent a lot of money developing Copernicus and Kings of the Amalai Reckoning, well north of the tune of 150 to almost 200 million dollars. Tryon made Rift in under 100 million. They've made their 100 million back. But, um, you know, I was, I just, I hate to see that MMO fail because I was really excited based upon its IP. And it sucks that it's gone, especially when it, it could have been done. So it's terrible to see mismanagement of funds at upper management leading to a game's demise. Yeah, you know, I don't know, though. I, I don't really know how much RA got paid or, you know, Todd got paid. It could have been one of those back-end kind of deals where they don't get a whole lot up front and they make most of the money in the back. They also got an MMO coming out called Defiance which is going to be an MMO FPS. And it's going to be tied in with a show on the Sci-Fi channel by the same name. And they're not going to... Okay, yeah. Oh, so Vel... Jinx, Velmex. But, yeah. Yeah, but that money doesn't necessarily have to do with uh, Tryon. Tryon also has some kind of, I don't know a whole lot about it yet, so I don't. I can't really speak to too much detail, but Tryon has some kind of publishing platform that they want to work on. Also, Tryon inked a pretty good money deal for Rift to send it over to Asia. So, you know, I didn't even think about that earlier. No, they're definitely uh, thinking to try new ground. Who knows how well this game's doing in China or Korea. And the thing is, they inked a deal with another person to publish it. I don't even know how much they're liable for the expenses on that deal. I mean, that could have been a gold mine for them. And again, that's not a... They're a private held company, so we don't necessarily get to see that contract because I don't know that there's any law saying that they have to provide that information to the public. But, I mean, that could have been a total win-win for them. Yes, one of the biggest things in business nowadays isn't about your revenue, it's about controlling your costs. Because a lot of times these markets are pretty well tapped out and the thing that's going to differentiate you from the next guy is how well you control your cost, your cost structure.
And that's just a fundamental truth. Unless you're Blizzard. Mech Warrior Online looks really cool. Apparently, I accidentally hit a ma hit a macro, and now my macros are gonna go nuts. Well, Synex, we've done a little bit of PvP, but yeah, we at this point we're just node attacking. Let's see, this is contested right here. We kind of have them pinned into their base. So while we got this one faction pinned into their base, we're capping these other nodes, and then there's another faction running around, but there's only a handful of those guys, so we're not really concerned about them because they, they really just don't have the numbers to catch up to us. Now, if they started trying to take our points away from us, then we'd have to be concerned with them. And by that I mean the Oath Sworn. Like if the Oath Sworn said, oh hey, let's ally ourselves with Nightfall and start taking Dominion points. You know, it's like trying to trip, double team us to take us down. Then we'd have to worry about squashing them out. But right at the moment, they're not doing much of anything. And so here, there's some PvP action going on up here. And this is my guys that apparently... Apparently we did more we pushed them back even more. Now this extraction point is like in their starter camp almost. So this is a pretty big one to take from them. There is not a cap per faction right now. I could see them having to put one in, though, just because their servers can't really sustain too many people. There we go. My guys are RPN. I just told them to RP them into oblivion. Yeah, I don't think they can handle the limit cap either. <laughs> Mountain Dew flavored lip balm. Okay, kids. You kids and your favorite crazy sodas. My Mountain Dew from America. It's actually Diet Mountain Dew, but... So we're winning 15 to 10. Oath Sworn have four. 122 people have died. 120. Oh, I'm sorry, 113 people have died now. God bless us. Yeah. 
we gave the world democracy and Diet Mountain Dew lip balm. We do have peanut butter and jelly in the same jar, but it's not really as good. And for anybody that's just recently joined the chat, if you appreciate uh, the type of streaming I do, I appreciate you coming and watching, and you can follow me at these links. And no, I just bumped the wrong ones. I stream on Twitch about three nights a week. I typically am on Saturday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. And I'm almost always on this channel. However, I do have my own channel. I just usually stream on this one because nobody's on it. This one gets a better exposure. All right, my tank's got 19,000 hit points, and I promise you, with the tier three raids out now, it ain't poop. I would bet. But if this conquest takes off, man, I promise you, I'll be streaming some of this conquest on um, Twitch. This will be like a Tuesday night kind of stream, Tuesday or Saturday night. Oh. And if any of you guys out there like DDO, I know it may sound a little weird, but I do a weekly stream with DDO, and I do a monthly stream with Dark Age Camelot. So I, I break out some of the old school games. And Wednesday is usually way back Wednesday. That's when you'll find some of the older games. And prestige rank 23. What does it go up to now? Is it 40? Yes, I'm going to play Guild Wars 2. I've already pre-ordered Guild Wars 2. I play a little Terra every now and again. I, I dabble in Diablo 3. <laughs> I play a lot of games. I don't get to play a lot of games hardcore. I get to dabble in a lot of games. Yeah, is that what it is? Okay. So I'm not too far behind the curve. <laughs> yes, I am. I don't know why they want to sit here and camp the spot. So horrible. So not fun. All right, we're going to go back to... Uh, oh, once there gets to be a bunch of people in it, I like it. I mean, I think it's... Uh, I think a lot of people are going to play it first, and then some people are going to play it later on. And it really depends on how they uh, 
on how they reward people for participating. You know, if they give people a decent amount of favor and ex planner attunement experience for playing it, people will continue to play it. If not, they'll do the battlegrounds because it'll be faster and I don't know if it bolsters you or not. I don't know. I do know that they have a new animation for the Greater Primal Companion now. And he looks beast compared to the stupid little spectral cat he looked like the first time. Now he's like... Now he's like, look at me. I'm an armored monster. I'm really a primal beast. See, he looks cool. And I wonder if he looks the same or different for uh, the Guardians. Yes, Conquest is similar to Guild Wars 2, World vs. World model. Um, this is cross-server. It doesn't matter what server you're on, and your faction doesn't matter. It matters which additional faction you choose to align yourself with. So some of these guys that are I am currently in a group with could actually be Guardians. Um, It's not as fun. I, I really wish I could have messed with the crafting. I went to the crafting table at my... And here, this right here will give you planar uh, charges if you don't have any. You're supposed to be able to craft, and through the crafting provide buffs to your team that prevails throughout the entire war front and not able to do that for whatever reason. I just don't know if it's not in the game yet. Wasn't able to do it. Was able to pick up the crafting materials and bring them back to my table and drop them off, but wasn't able to craft anything. So... Yeah. See, like, this is it right here. An empowered source stone. I'm concerned that people are going to figure out which gives them favor in PA faster and stick with that one. So they're going to have to make sure that they tune the amount of planar attunement and experience, planar attunement experience and prestige you can earn per hour with that of like a battleground and make sure that they're sort of in line with each other. Otherwise, people are going to do one and not the other. That's the same thing with PvP refs. I mean, do people do PvP refs right now? Thanks, Velmax. I appreciate it. I think part of it is because Rift has always had a problem with people participating in the uh, P2R, or the, P the P2R, <laughs> the PTR, or the PTS. Because people just don't participate in the PTS on Rift, and they never really have, uh, like you see in some other games. That's one of the reasons why I think that they went ahead and offered a title to people who participated this time. So everybody that's in here participating is supposed to be awarded a title for being in Conquest.
So, but uh, I I would say that uh, Oswarm's starting to catch, pick it up there. They're up to seven. I'm gonna shut the stream down here in a few minutes. I appreciate everybody taking the time to come out and hang out and check out this newfangled deal called Conquest. I, you know, I, I understand what you're saying about it not having PvP content, but I mean, they're trying. They're putting all the carrots there to get people to come here and PvP, you know. It's rough. It's a fickle thing. So, if I'm going to tune it down, I appreciate everybody coming and watching. Uh, if you don't already, make sure you follow the channel. Uh, make sure you also check in on MMORPG.com, and we try and have most of the latest news on everything RPG for you. And, yes, I appreciate it, Kickax. And I was going to say, if uh, you guys want to follow me on Twitter or Facebook or anything like that, at least follow the channel. If you follow me on Twitter, that's a bonus. You all have a wonderful night. And I always push my streams over to my YouTube channel, too. So if you ever want to see what I've streamed or what I've been up to, and... Just follow my YouTube, and you'll get like a weekly reminder emailed to you of the new streams I've done. That's about it. Everybody have a great night. I will be back Saturday. I'll be streaming probably the Secret World uh, beta or D3, and then at midnight Eastern, I'll be streaming DDO for an hour for our weekly Let's Play. That's it. Have a great night, everybody.